Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we're going to be doing a brand review of Built Hamber Laboratories. Leo comes down, boy, or I will lay you down. Say your last prayer, say your last prayer, and don't look back here no more. The Lord can't help you, you've gone too far for sure. So Bill, Bill Hamber is one branch of a company under a whole family of companies under the Hamber name. So it all started back in 1963 with Hamber and Whiskins Engineering and Hamber Safes. So Hamber and Whiskin Engineering were founded by Henry Hamber and Lem Whiskins. So Hamber and Whiskins originally started out making iron lamps and light fittings, okay? So they grew a reputation of good precision engineering capabilities and that led to a series of contracts with the military to make um, kind of missile heads and ignition blocks and all that kind of precision engineering equipment. So the company's expertise led to the development of extremely corrosion resistance flow meters and valve equipment used in the oil industry for, for um, transporting oil through pipelines. So lots of the precision engineering equipment that needed to be rust resistance that were used in oil pipelines was created by Hamber and Wilkins. So Hamber Safes was created as another company in 1968 and they were focused on manufacturing drill proof safes as well as wall mounted underfloor safes. And Hamber Safes are still around today producing and developing some of the, the best known award winning industry kind of safes that are out there. So throughout the history of the company, they're obviously dealing in kind of high precision engineering and kind of construction engineering and you know, mechanical engineering. And, and as part of that engineering through the, for the original Hamber Wilkins company and the Hamber Safes, there's obviously a vested interest there in um, rust prevention, okay, and corrosion treatment, okay. And that seems to be the, the foundation for where Hamber Laboratories were first started. So Built Hamber Laboratories were created back in the 1990s when it became apparent to the owner, Peter Hamber, that the existing calcium soap and wax-based anti-corrosion kind of products that were out there were not effective. So the range grew from, from being these kind of rust preventative and rust curing products, which, were, which caught the interest of the automotive kind of sector straight away, where obviously back then rust, especially on the underneath of the car and some of the unpro unprotected components was a big problem. From that initial kind of interest in the, in the rust curing and rust prevention side, there's grown a whole large range of car maintenance products. So beyond their rust prevention and kind of rust treatment products, Built Hamber have developed this wider range now of car maintenance products. And it's in this review that we're gonna have a look at those kind of more detailing based car maintenance products. Okay guys, the first thing we're going to be looking at is Built Hamber's Snow Foam Pre-Wash, okay? Now the first thing is the price, it's $16.95 for 5 litres of concentrate, okay? Now anyone who's been buying lots of detailing products will know that that is cheap for snow foam first of all. That is, that is almost kind of half the price of, of what I would call the market average, you know? You look around with with detailing brands a lot of them will sell you five liters of snow foam for somewhere between 25 and 30 seems to be the market price so that's one very important thing about uh, auto foam is the price 16.95 for five liters which is very very good value for money okay like all snow foams and i've done a video on snow foams and all the equipment you know and how you can deliver them but they're best delivered through a kind of pressure washer and a snow foam lance okay so you mix out according to the kind of manufacturer's recommendations into your snow foam lance. You spray your snow foam over your car. You leave it to dwell for, a, for, you know, depending on the conditions, you obviously don't want soaps drying on your car, but you leave it to dwell for five to 10 minutes, or as you start to see the foam disappear and kind of run off the car, and change color from a clean white to a slightly sort of dirtier color as it slides down. 
and then you rinse that off either under pressure or, or without pressure which is up to you okay so they're very simple products to use you put them on you rinse them off and, and the purpose of them is they are supposed to help break down that dirt that initial kind of layer of film that's on your car and just take a certain amount of that dirt off without you having to make kind of contact with the car which is going to help maintain the finish of your paintwork. So auto foam is a heavy concentrated soap that's designed to remove contaminant and soiling from your car. So the product itself is non-caustic so you know a high caustic strong product continued use of that over time can have an in, a negative impact to the kind of quality of your finish. So that's the first thing when you're developing these. So some of the snow foams on the market contain a, a chemical called sodium hydroxide, which is another component which can, which can deteriorate your clear coat over time. This is sodium hydroxide free. So here's the first thing I read about the product that was interesting, okay? A lot of these snow foams are kind of renowned for really foaming up thick and, and they're kind of, the people that use them like to use them in a real heavy concentration and get that thick, clinging foam on the side of your car, okay, almost inches. Now, I've never liked snow foams that tend to over foam like that. I prefer, in my snow foam video, I said I like the ones that are quite, quite thin and snotty that I can see having more of an impact on the actual dirt on the car, okay? I've just found that the ones that are really foamy don't tend to clean as well with the ones that I've used anyway. Now, this, this built hamber snow foam has been formulated as what they call a rapid wet product okay so it alleviates removes the need for that kind of high foam build up clinging on the side of the car so it's this rapid breaking down of the accumulated bubbles which helps with the wetting process and allows the surfacants to kind of actually do your do their job in breaking down this grime quickly and then carrying it off your car okay i was i was interested to see how this foam shapes up okay now the first the first thing I've mentioned is the, the foam is not as thick and, and sort of uh, foamy as other products. So it doesn't stick to your car. It doesn't stay there. You put it on and you will see that kind of run off the um, car quite quickly, okay? Now, that's kind of got a good advantage as well that in the summer, if you're ever having to work on a car that's hot, you don't want to be using a snow foam with a high dwell time. In the winter, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can leave the foam on for long amounts of time. You know, it will only dry out if you leave it on there for ages, but it's important in the summer. So that's a good feature that it doesn't have this high dwell time that some of the other ones will need to have before they work. After a few minutes, most of it's kind of almost run off the car on its own. The second thing, okay, the, the, the key thing, the thing that anyone who's into detailing is trying to look at, and that is how effective it is breaking down that film of dirt that is on your car, okay? That, you know, that if, you, if you've got your finger and you can, you can write an X, you can write your initials, that, that dirt, that's what you want it to remove, okay? Now this product to me is one of the most effective snow finds I've ever seen at removing that kind of road film off the car in a contactless manner, okay? And, and they're quite simple to do these layman's tests. So the, if you want to compare the power of them, okay, mix them out and try and, if you're comparing products, try and give them an e e even sort of concentration. Put them on, on you know, one half of, of your car, you know, don't tape it up, you just put it on one side where it's covered in film and another side where it's covered in film. And just let the product sit there for as long as it sits there and just rinse it off with, um, water okay no high pressure just rinse it off and then just have a look and see if you can see any difference with the amount of film that each one has removed this for me is really strong on its cleaning power and its ability to remove that film as strong as any of them that i've seen okay okay so the first thing i want to talk about is removing the residue okay that's left now some kind of soap based products you know when you're using them you've got them in the bucket they foamed up okay you're fine you're using them you're, you're cleaning your car with them. Some of them can be a right pain to remove off the car, okay? And if you just, even if they get a hint of drying out, they can leave residue marks that are a nightmare. This foam comes off the car beautifully, okay? You can, you can just loose rinse it off quickly. I used the pressure washer on the, uh, 
on the car because there wasn't a massive amount of film to be blasted around that I was going to be worried about. But the film, the residue or the product, once it's kind of worked and it's run, most of it's come off the car on its own, okay? But the little bit that's left, you just give it a quick rinse with the pressure washer with the hose and it is gone. And there is nothing later on when you finish drying the car. You know, sometimes you can go back over and see little kind of, little kind of deposits that are almost you know, almost like white chalky marks that can be in the little gaps that you've missed with the drying and stuff. This, this soap does not do that, okay? It just rinses off the car beautifully. So this is a main summary of my thoughts on auto wash. It's cheaper than a lot of other snow foams on the market. It's way below the, the market average price of five liters of snow foam concentrate. The second thing, the effectiveness, the cleaning power is right up there, okay? And I'm gonna do some more tests and probably eventually a best of snow foam type style video where we put these up head to head against each other. I'm expecting this one to do very well, okay? So it's got good cleaning power and it's, it's known for that. You know, a lot of people recognize that this is one of the best at kind of actually cleaning the films off rather than just looking great on your car like some of them do, you know? Um, the third thing, the lack of any sort of residue and, and the way the product rinses off and breaks down and comes off the car. So that, that kind of, that wet quality about it that some of those other products don't have. The thing I was talking about, about the residue coming off the car easily as well. If you ever get a snow foam or a shampoo where you finish washing your car and it's all over the, all over the driveway, some of them, those, those soaps and foams can sit there for like days until it rains. They just don't break down. This one has disappeared within like 10 minutes. It's gone, you know. So there's something very, very effective about this, this formulation that I just trust, okay? So it's, it's a little bit different to all the other products out there. It's wetter. It doesn't have to dwell as long. It rinses off the car better. And it is as, it is, it is as effective and potent as I've seen as a snow foam. So I really like this product. Okay, next up, Surfex HD, okay, their all-purpose cleaner and degreaser concentrate. Means it's a concentrating product, not concentrate in terms of listen. <laughs> okay, so Surfex HD, first thing I want to talk about is price, okay? So it's $9.95 for a litre of concentrate, $16.95 for five litres of concentrate, and I believe about £72 for 25 litres of concentrate. It's gonna last you a serious amount of time if you buy that. Um, but just wind back a second. So a tenner for a litre of concentrate, APC, that's kind of about normal, I, I would guess. But 16.95 for five litres, that, that's, that's a bit of a bargain. That doesn't sound right. Normally when it's a tenner a litre, when you get five litres, the price per litre drops to about seven quid, six quid. So your five litres is usually about 30 quid. 16.95 for five litres. So your price per liter over the first liter drops down to about a pound 60 a liter. So my recommendation there is buy five liters of the stuff because that's a really good price again. So we mentioned how cheap the snow foam was. Now we realize that the um, APC at five liters is also really good value for money. Pick a few of your favorite brands, your, the, you know, the big brands that are out there and go and check how much they're charging for five liters of APC. And not many of them be doing it for $16.95, okay? So I always think as an APC is a general kind of soap cleaner degreaser that, that you can use to clean anything, okay? And the power and potency of that APC can be controlled by how much more water you mix with it, okay? So with one litre of concentrate, you could effectively make 100 litres of that very light cleaner, okay? But you don't wanna mix it all down that way because the whole purpose of APCs is to have the flexibility to mix them to whatever kind of re required strength you want. Now, one to 100 would be for very kind of light cleaning duties. I'm thinking of like, you'll be spraying it on your microfiber, wiping down your kind of dashboard, generally inside, when you're just giving things a very light clean, your kind of, your door seals and all that sort of stuff. Generally, I'll go higher than one to 100 for virtually everything, okay? Because I don't want to have to keep mixing up different like levels, so I'll tend to mix a few preset ratios, and then if I can get two preset ratios, one for doing interior cleaning, and one for doing exterior cleaning, and then you've got the third option of it having it raw, if you like, at full concentrate, if you need all that kind of degreasing power. 
So just some bullet points on this APC. It's a water, it's a water-based APC, okay, which is a milder form than some of these solvent-based cleaners and degreasers that are out there. So it's a water-based APC that you can use as a degreaser as a general kind of cleaner. Um, and it's it's environmentally safe because of the fact that it's water-based. It's VOC free and it's biodegradable and it's highly concentrated so you can mix it out in those ratios we talked about before. So the main performance thing I want to pick up on that I can sometimes notice with other APCs is sometimes the other ones can be a bit slimy and a bit kind of soapy. Okay, and they can again have problems with the residue that they leave behind. Not all of them, there's some other really good APCs out there and the channel is also will get round to doing a best APC at some point. You know, every product could have a best of video, but it takes a long time to, to kind of get round to doing them. But again, with this, the soap just seems to come off the kind of car, or come off the surface quite easily with minimal fuss. There seems to be less of that kind of slimy residue left behind. So it's, being, Bill Hamber have got, got some sort of clever thing they do with their soaps. They're very nice to work with. They seem to be potent, but they don't seem to kind of leave anything behind. So that's perhaps the thing I can notice with this product. I know it's a very effective cleaner, okay, you know, in terms of breaking down the grease. It's a well-regarded APC as well, Surfex HD. A lot of people, as well as using it as an APC, will use it through a foam cannon in the same way as a kind of um, a traffic film remover because of that degreasing quality. It will do that and it will work very well as that. But again, be careful when you start increasing the concentrations because um, when you use these degreasers in that way, they can break down any kind of um, coatings that you might have on the car. Not, you know, when I say coatings like waxes and stuff like that, they can weaken them a little bit because they, they've got degreasers in them, you know. So Surfex HD, in summary, is a very cheap product. It has that little bargain secret buy that if you buy five litres of it, you get, you get loads. Almost half of me almost thinks that's a mistake and I should tell them, oh, guys, you've, you've messed up your pricing here, but it's been priced like that forever. So they, they're just encouraging you to buy more, but that's a fantastic um, jump down in price from one litre to five litres. Massive, massive step down. So the price is good, the soap, the formulation is really good. It has the potency, but it doesn't have any residue issues and it's easy to use. You, you have a good concentration there. At neat, it is really potent, but you can go all the way down to 1% or even, even half a percent, 200 to one, as some people are saying, for light cleaning duties. So, so basically, Surfex HD will do everything you need an all-purpose cleaner to do. It's got the added added bonus of being kind of non-voc and, and biodegradable and it can be used in low concentrations as a traffic film remover as well. It is a fantastic product. So this is Auto Wash, Built Hamber's high concentrate shampoo. It's free from any thickeners, from any waxes or any corrosive salts, okay? And that all goes towards um, the product having a good reputation for being easy to remove again, like, like I've seen with their other soaps. Okay, so the shampoo is also anti-corrosive, so it's gonna help if you're using a solid car with stone chips that are down and you've got exposed metal that are gonna rust. This will help prevent rusting on any exposed bits of your car as well, okay? But the main thing about it from using it is it is really concentrated and the foam levels coming out of it are, are, are good. So the first thing I wanna talk about with Auto Wash is the price, okay? It's 9.95 for 300 mil concentrate. Each wash, you will use approximately five milliliters of the product per wash bucket, okay? Five milliliters. So that five milliliters per wash, with 300 milliliters, that will give you 60 washes for your 10 pounds, according to my, my brain, if you're just using five mil at one go, okay? If you're filling up one of those huge buckets, those 20 liter buckets with say 15 liters, you might need to up the quantity to anywhere between seven and 10 milliliters of product, giving you 30 washes, okay? What I will say about this is it is really potent. Don't go crazy with it. Don't, don't ever go tipping it in. Go and buy yourself one of these measuring syringes. You should already really have these. Just eBay, on eBay, just put in five mil measuring syringe and you'll find them for pennies and get sell five mil, 10 mil, 50 mil, 100 mil. So you've got a few because they're, they're cheap. Um, so I used five mil and I kept the bucket somewhere around about half full. The concentration level was fine, okay. 
one thing I always like to do when I, whenever I'm using car shampoo, is I always like to be able to kind of put some into my mitt and kind of uh, make sure there's loads of foam in that mitt, because I just like to use lots of foam, okay? So I put about one to two mil in here and filled this up with kind of water and just used it as a kind of little booster to kind of squeeze a bit into my mitt as a booster so I can get loads of product, okay? And that always works well with any shampoo product. So I want to keep this quite simple. This could quite possibly be the best shampoo I've ever used, okay? Um, the reason being quite simple for me, with shampoos, I like them to be high foaming, okay? I want lots of foam in my bucket. I want to be able to put that kind of foam syrup that I mix up into my mitt and have loads of foam going everywhere. I want to be able to see that I've got all that white foam between me and the dirt, working on the dirt. I like to get all the foam into all of the kind of bits around the, the window. I like to get the foam everywhere and work it, okay? So there's lots of foam. The cleaning power on it is fantastic as well, okay? Um, but the, the most important thing is the foam that Built Hamburger are, are making, the quality of bad detergent, whatever it is, whatever the soap is, whatever the formulation is, they just have seem to have something sorted with how easy this these products come off the car. So the residue from this shampoo rinses off the car beautifully, okay? But they don't seem to have sacrificed potency with that. In fact, the opposite. It's a really potent shampoo, but it's really easy to use. It's really easy to foam up, and it's really easy to get off the car. And that is it. I don't want to overcomplicate I don't want to overcomplicate it too much because that's all I want from my shampoo. Um, I want those, those suds there that are nice and slidey and um, giving me the lubrication. It just ticks every box, okay? And the product isn't expensive at the same time when you're using their doses. This is a fantastic shampoo, without doubt one of the best that I've ever used. Perhaps the only thing that could be improved about this product is the bottle that it comes in. I think just providing people, because it's concentrated, with a, with a method to measure it properly, like this, you know. It's no problem for me being into detailing. I've got loads of these and I know I've got to get the dosage right, you know. Some people out there, you know, me, I could have fallen into that category five years ago, would be guilty of just getting this, thinking it's shampoo, taking the lid off, giving it the old man size, man size estimate of how much to put in the bucket and you put the old lot in and then uh, you get a shock of your life when you go to fill it up with water and you can't see anything because you're covered in foam. Um, I'm clutching at straws at bad things to say and literally that is it. It could come in a slightly more user-friendly bottle that allows you to control how much you pour out of there a bit more. Doesn't bother me. So first up, a little bit of background about these bleeding fallout remover products, okay? So this is just my understanding from a limited amount of research, and as always, there could be could, could be a few things that are a little bit off here. <laughs> so these bleeding fallout products that, that you see that kind of turn purple when they react with the fallout that's kind of in, on the car, they contain an active ingredient called thigolic acid, okay, or TGA. Now this traditional kind of acid cleaners work by trying to shrink the fallout that's kind of embedded into your clear coat, which makes it easier to remove. Now what these particular products do is a chemical reaction with the phygolic acid and the iron in the fallout occurs, okay? So that the iron solid, which is bonded into the lacquer, reacts with the phygolic acid and forms a liquid ferric acid, which is purple, okay? And you'll see that purple, that pink, and it becomes darker and darker as the reaction occurs. So the, the, the bonded fallout turns to a liquid ferret, ferric acid and bleeds out of the um, clear coat that it's embedded to, okay? Once that chemical reaction is, has occurred, the thigolic component, the thigolic acid component of the product is spent, okay? So that's an important thing, we'll come back to that. So why is it important to remove this kind of iron fallout from your, your lacquer inside your wheels and on your bodywork when it gets there? Well, first of all, it's coming from your brakes. So when you're braking, your brake discs are rubbing against the pads and it's getting hot with the friction and it's throwing this brake dust out. And most of that kind of fallout comes flying out from the brakes and it's hot and it sticks um, and bonds onto the clear coat, okay? And also some of it flies out of the wheels and um, gets mixed in with the road grime and grit that gets on the side of your car or it gets bonded onto the paintwork of your car. 
okay? So you get fallout in the, in the clear coat of your car as well as in the wheels, but more commonly, most of it is in the alloy wheels. That bonded contaminant will then rust, okay? And when it rusts, it expands and it cracks and damages your clear coat and causes your clear coat to fail, okay? So getting rid of that bonded contaminant that's stuck in the clear coat safely is a really important part of maintaining the clear coat on your car, which in turn helps maintain your, your paintwork of your car generally. Okay, so one very important thing I wanna talk about with these, these fallout removers, okay? The fallout removers that you use to clean wheels, this, this TGA or thigolic acid, which reacts with the ferrum, when you have a very dirty alloy wheel and it's got that kind of layer of, of grime, which, which generally isn't, isn't just all mud, it's brake dust mixed in with kind of road dirt and grime, okay? Now that dirt and grime isn't bonded to your car, okay? If you spray a reactive fallout cleaner all over that alloy, it will light up like a Christmas tree because all the grime that's just sitting on the surface is, has, has got brake dust in it, okay? And the consequence of doing that is that you will spend your thigolic acid and it will react with dirt that is not bonded to your alloy. And if it's not bonded to your alloy, that dirt can be removed with traditional kind of cleaning methods, whether it's kind of, um, you know, a shampoo in a bucket with some nice wheel brushes, whether it's just using your pressure washer, whether it's using a concentrated kind of alkaline wheel cleaner, whatever, whatever your choice is. But the key thing I want to get across is if you're just if you're spraying these onto dirty alloys, the the reaction, the chelating chemical process that removes those bonded contaminants by turning them into a ferric acid is wasted. Okay, that is even more of a kind of that's even more of an important issue because the fallout remover products are generally more expensive than your shampoos or your concentrated wheel cleaners. So. The first tip is to always really try and clean your alloy to a good standard first using your pressure wash, using brush, brush methods and your soaps or whatever other products you use that are cheap, okay? Then when you have your wheel cleaned to a good standard, you can examine it for kind of spots of fallout. But generally what I find is they will have um, those bonded contaminants in the wheel. You know, if you haven't used the fallout remover within sort of three or four weeks and you've been driving the car a fair amount, so the short story is when your alloy wheel is clean, give it a quick dry off and then spray your product, your fallout remover over it, and then you will see the bonded contaminants, the little dots lighting up and bleeding out with this chelation process. That's how you should use them. And if you use them that way, the products will last a lot longer than just kind of spraying them over and, and, and wasting the chemical reaction on the non-bonded um, dirt and grime with fallout in it that's sitting on the alloy. So Built Hamber have two products, uh, Auto Wheels, which is a fallout remover for wheels, and Corosol, which is a fallout remover for the body contaminate that makes it onto your clear coat and panels on the car. So they are slightly different formulated products. And the Auto Wheel products, I believe, you know, has kind of more degreasers in there for removing that thicker kind of road grime and, and working better as a general wheel cleaner. Whereas Corosol, I think, is more geared up around moving smaller amounts of bonded contaminant from your, from your clear coat as opposed to your wheel. So there's different formulations there, okay? I know for a fact if you spray the, the auto wheels onto the contaminant that's on your panels, it'll work. But I think it's better to have them both and use them for the purposes that they were formulated for. The key thing I want to get over about these two built hamber products, okay, Corosol and auto wheels, there is a lot of difference of opinion in, in how effective these fallout removers are and whether there's any difference in them but because they all light up, they all contain the thigolate, you know, thigolic acid, sorry. They all, if that's what it is, the TGA, I believe that's the active ingredient or some form of salt acid. They all contain that, they all smell a bit nasty, they all react and then they all turn purple, okay? So these two particular products, I've been using them for a fair old amount of time now and any fallout remover which I get, I test them up against it. And you typically on a white panel with, with little specks of fallout in there. And I'll spray, spray the Corosol on, and, or the auto wheels if I'm testing a wheel dedicated one. And I'll just observe it and I will time how long it takes for the fallout to start bleeding out, okay? And how quickly it bleeds out to the point where it's kind of disappeared off of the panel. Now when you spray these products on, 
they start to fall out and you see the little bleeding trail coming out of the fallout spot easily within 10 seconds, sometimes as little as six seconds, you know, but virtually straight away after spraying them on, you'll see them start bleeding out. Other products that I've used, I've seen ones that can take minutes to start bleeding out. You know, the general average, it, it, it really does vary. Some of them will start bleeding out after about 30 seconds. That seems to be the average. Some of them are after a minute, but not one that I've tested has been able to bleed out within kind of 10 seconds to the intensity of um, the built hamber products, okay? Now there is more to these products, especially the wheel cleaner side. There is more to them than just the thigolic sort of chelation, sorry, that chelation function, the bleeding fallout function. So there are other salt acids in there which are, which are helping to clean the alloys. So there's other areas of performance which are a little bit harder to measure. But in terms of measuring the bleeding fallout potential of these products, these are the best two products that I've seen on the market so far. So we talked a little bit about clay bars before in this channel, and if you haven't seen the the clay bar Bible or how to clay a car video, go and have a watch if you've got, got a couple of hours spare. I think I rabbited on a lot on that one. And um, the main thing I wanna get across about clay barring, okay? So clay barring is there to, to, to remove those bonded contaminants like the fallout that's, that's stuck in your clear coat, like the uh, tar and, and sort of sap, anything which kind of basically bonds and sticks to your clear coat and can't be removed via the normal kind of washing with shampoos. Now the fallout removers will help get that iron contaminant out of your clear coat and um, tar and glue removers will help get sap, you know, melt the sap off your clear coat. So there is that chemical decontamination process, but to thoroughly decontaminate your car, ultimately you're gonna to need to be going in with the clay bar at some point, okay? Now I'm guilty of being one of those guys that a few years ago wasn't too convinced that there was a difference in performance with clay and, clay was clay and you rub it over your clear coat and it kind of pulls that dirt off, okay? So I would sort of went down the path of trying any and every form of cheap clay from, from even going wholesale, you know, to Chinese wholesalers and approaching them and getting some samples sent through to see if I could find a decent wholesale clay that I could bring over here and, you know, use and maybe flog. So I had loads of clay samples at one point. I tried that 3M clay that everyone was talking about. I tried the knockoff 3M clay that you could buy a big ton of it for like a quid on eBay, you know, the blue tack. I tried everything, okay? And it wasn't until I was going through and trying all these other forms of clay and testing them out on clear coat and actually seeing how effective they were that I kind of discovered the, the built hamber clay. And the first time I discovered it was when I had some overspray I was trying to get off on a, on a silver car, okay, and it was red overspray, and I saw it straight away, okay, and I was, I was using what I thought was a good, aggressive clay bar, and rubbing over this overspray, and it wasn't coming off. And uh, so I tried one of my other clay, clays, sorry, an expensive one, um, you know, from a brand leader, let's just say, a good, well-known clay bar, and it as well, it just, I was having to do about 10 passes to get this fallout off, okay, and I had some built hamber, um, I had some built hamber regular clay that I just, I heard someone recommend and I went and bought it. And it was sitting there and I, I thought, I haven't tried that one. And I went and got my built hamber regular clay and I just started working on that fallout remover and it just took it straight off the car. It was taking like literally five to 10 passes with the other one to get this fallout off of the car. And Built Hamber's um, regular clay, which is their most aggressive clay, was literally taken off on either the first pass or the, or the sort of swipe back pass. So straight away then, at that point, it was like, wow, I've discovered a clay that is a lot more effective at removing heavy contaminants. You know, specifically overspray in that, in that case. But, so at that point, I kind of never touched those Chinese clay, clays again, and I was just convinced all I needed for my detailing needs was built hamber regular clay. And I was doing lots of clay with the, lots of clay with the regular clay from then inwards and recommending it. After buying their heavier clay, the next time I needed some more clay, I thought I'll just try, I'll just try their medium one, because they're, he, they're, they're heavy clay, they're, they're regular clay, sorry, their most aggressive one, is quite a thick 
product and you really need to get it warm before it starts becoming pliable and they, they say this you can soak it in kind of warm water to get it to get it kind of you know get it warmed up and get it workable but their medium clay is slightly softer okay and their their soft clay is even softer than that okay so in the really cold winter months now the soft clay is kind of workable at these cold temperatures whereas their regular and medium clay are a bit harder so where I'm going with this is Built Hamber offer three forms of clay, okay? Regular, which is the aggressive one. Medium, which is their medium kind of aggression one, if you like. And soft, which is a softer clay and less aggressive. So what I know about Built Hamber clay is that if I'm dealing with a car that has a heavy amount of contaminate on it and or overspray, okay? I will reach for the Built Hamber regular clay every single time because I know that other clays need about 10 passes to do what I can do in two or three passes with the built hamber okay so it's got that level of regression there that I want it if there isn't tons of um, if there isn't tons of contaminant on the car or I want just a softer clay I will ease down to either the medium or the soft clay okay and the soft clay is a lot less aggressive but it's still more effective than still more aggressive than most of these um, really cheap kind of Chinese clays that literally get nothing and it's not until you've seen kind of you've compared them next to each other and looked at what they're pulling off when you can really see that the performance of built hamber is there okay one other really important thing about clay bar okay these clay bars are around 10 or 11 pounds I think two of them are 10 pounds um, now two of them might be 10.95 and one of them might be 9.95 um, for 200 grams okay that's good value for money you'll still get the odd vendor there trying to do a sneaky one on you where they'll charge you 12.95 but you'll be getting 100 grams of clay not 200 grams or there's one very big company out there that are sneakily trying to sell you 50 grams of clay for a tenner um, and the 50 grams is tucked away on the corner of the packaging. So you're actually paying about sort of 40 quid for 200 grams. So at 9.95 or 10.95, depending on which one you go for, for 200 grams, you have a clay which is actually, you know, one of the best value for money clays as well as one of the best performing clays out there on the market. Again, at some point, the channel will be doing a best of clay video. But at this precise moment in time, this is by far and away the best clay bar product on the market. Um, if you disagree, I'd be interested in your opinion because we all got difference of opinion. It's not, it's not the end of the world if you don't agree with me. In fact, I like to hear it when people don't agree with me. Okay guys, first up, Finiwax. Finiwax is a superior last stage treatment for the protection of highly finished automobile paint systems. The high grade T1 Carnauba wax is used as a backbone to provide deep rich gloss Whilst unlike other automotive waxes, excellent gloss, ease of application, and buffability are provided by other gloss enhancing molecules. Okay, so what they're saying here is they've got a wax blend, okay, that contains additives, okay, which, which increase certain characteristics of the wax, okay. Now, one ad additive they've got in here is providing durability. If you have yourself a natural wax blend and you mix in with it some organic carrier oils and you throw a solvent in it, you'll be lucky if you can get 30 days out of it, okay, because the, the product you're putting there is just sitting on your clear coat with surface tension. There's no bonding going on. The wax, the wax mixed with the oil and solvent doesn't form a hard enough kind of surface that is going to kind of be able to withstand weathering and kind of being out into the elements so in effect it will get washed away after about 30 days okay and if you did a high carnauba blend which is one of the more kind of harder forms of wax you'll be maximizing your durability that you can get from a natural wax product so i suspect this wax has a certain amount of carnauba in there as like they say the backbone of the wax content but then mixed in with those with that carnauba I think will be modified forms of silicon or modified forms of siloxane or PDMS. And some of those modified forms of silicon products are out there and they can provide you with different characteristics. Like they can provide you with a high gloss carrier oil, silicon based carrier oil. They can provide you with a, a siloxane resin that's gonna kind of give you the durability that you need. Or they could, they could provide you with a sort of um, hydrophobic form of silicon if you like um, that's going to um, repel water so i suspect 
this is kind of like a silicon, a modified silicon version of a wax, okay? Now, one thing with this wax is the performance of it is fantastic, okay? Um, the durability of the wax is fantastic. And I was expecting, because this, is, this has been around for a while, this product, and it's known for how long it lasts, okay? I was suspecting that the product was, was gonna be difficult to remove, okay? It wasn't, it comes off the paintwork really, really nice. The one thing I've noticed with it is they have two offerings. And I think although this wax might edge it in terms of durability and, and the gloss is lovely, Carnuba gives you a lovely gloss. It really does. So many people use it for that reason. And it's a valid reason. You know, all wax makers will have played around with it. It'll be in lots of waxes. It is a great product. It's a great thing to have on your clear cone. It really does give it that depth, okay? So the finish that this gives you is really nice and the gloss. But with the durability that comes with this wax, I was expecting more removal problems. It comes off of the car beautifully, okay? The only difference I see is that the water behavior of the double speed wax, the, the water on our oil repellency and that detergent repellency that they talk about is, is more prolific on the double speed wax. Finney Speed Wax is $14.99 for 200 milliliters. And we'll come back and talk about that price a little bit later on. Okay, so next up we have Built Hamber's Double Speed Wax, okay? The Carnuba wax used provides a deep, rich, glossy, high water repellent and detergent resistant film. Double Speed Wax provides an economic and superior alternative to costly paste waxes, which simply do not compete performance wise with this material. So your natural wax blend, no matter how much skill has gone into creating that blend to give you all the characteristics that organic waxes could give you, no matter what carrier oils they use, no matter what solvents they use, the performance of a natural wax blend just cannot compete, okay? And there are natural wax blends out there that are big money, you know, there's some that are over 100 pounds for 200 milliliters of natural wax. And no matter what they tell you about the product and the kind of allure, unfortunately, that product's never gonna be able to compete on performance. And, there's no one, to be fair, there's no one out there that's arguing it can, but but they kind of get categorized in this show wax category to say, well, they're all about using the authentic ingredients and kind of providing short-term gloss. So double speed wax, it's kind of a medium hard paste wax. It feels hard when you first touch it. If you push hard enough in, the wax will suddenly give and you'll be able to push through it. As you work the wax with your finger, it will start to break down and have a slight oiliness to it, which is what you want, because that means the more you work it on the applicator, it will spread out. Now, I don't think they're using any natural oils in here. I could be wrong, but I think the oils that they're using, again, are the modified forms of silicon. Now, there's a difference between these two products, and there's a difference in how they perform, and there's a difference in how they're applied, okay? This product is slightly stickier to remove than the finny wax, okay? It has a slightly more grabby feel on the microfiber. It doesn't dry to a rock hard kind of um, finish, but there's a bit of pull there. You will generally get that on all waxes that do provide long-term durability, okay? Because they generally contain these resins that kind of, these siloxane resins, which will tie in and fortify the kind of wax. So I think this has probably got some of that in there. So they say they've got a hydrophobic polymer in there again. I suspect that's a modified form of silicon that's got good water repellent characteristics. So you get the water and the oil repellency, and you get the beading, if you like, and you get that kind of detergent resistance. So you can just sort of see the water shooting off the car a lot more, okay? And I notice it with this wax, okay? So the more I've got into kind of waxes, the more I'm looking for that characteristic. I, I like it on my cars. I think. The consumer seems to like it. I think now if you're developing a wax and giving it, putting it out there, you need to really show good durability for me and you need to be able to show that level of hydrophobic quality. And then beyond that, the better and easier it is to, the, to apply, the more marks you get, okay? But bearing in mind that to install that durability, by default, you put in products which will make the wax a little bit harder to remove. So that's going back to that point about trade-offs again when you're, when you're formulating these products. So using these products, basically you apply them with your applicator, you make sure you've got good thin coverage over all your panel. You wait for them to cure between five to 10 minutes. The longer you leave them to cure, the harder they will be to remove, but the perhaps 
you'll get better durability out of them. But I always tend to, I always tend to not let them over cure. I'd rather them under cure, get buff them off, and then leave them alone to just carry on, kind of curing for for hours after the removal. You know. Um, so you put them on, you let them haze out, and you buff them off. Okay, and they're very easy to use because they're providing durability, especially. Less so with the finny wax, which you think would be harder to remove because it's one of the most durable waxes out there. More so with the double speed. That's, this is slightly more grabby. Neither of them are that much of a problem to apply. Both of them give you a fantastic finish. This gives you a longer durability, but this gives you more hydrophobic performance. This is slightly more grabby to remove, okay? The next thing, the price, okay? Both these waxes are $14.99 for 200 grams. I believe they're 200 grams. That's about as cheap as it gets, you know, with waxes. No one out there is charging that sort of money, really. I can't think of many people that are charging that sort of price point. And the quality of these waxes for the money, you know, they're award winning. I think they picked up awards on, um, was it Auto Express? They picked up awards, you know, everyone, these waxes are well known that the performance of them is good and they're popular waxes. But again, going back to the price, $14.99. If this wax was 30 quid, I would have no problems going out there and buying it. Because it does, if you just had to have one wax on your shelf that does everything well, you know, gives you good durability, way beyond six months, gives you lovely levels of gloss, that kind of nuba, deep kind of shine, you can see it, okay? Um, but also gives you, also gives you kind of the water repellency that, that everyone loves to see, and gives it to you for 14.99. So if you're looking, if you're a guy out there that's not, two into waxes but wants a really good performing wax rather than a shorter durability show wax and doesn't want to spend a fortune then for me out of the two products i would i still like the finish i still like the finished wax don't get me wrong but i just like the added water behavior of the double speed wax so that would be the one that i would probably recommend as giving you the complete package um, just be aware that if you leave it for a real long time to cure it is a little bit more grabby to buff off so i tend to just get it get it off the car put it on thing get it off after five minutes and it's lovely to use you will love the finish and you will love the durability and the kind of water repellency this this product gives you everything for for um for not a lot of money okay guys next up auto qd this is built hamber's quick detail finishing dressing Okay, I'm just going to read you the product description on this, okay? Unique charge polymers suspend particle matter to protect highly finished automotive paints from hologram scratching. Safely cleans paintworks between washes. The high shine imparted protects and beautifies paintwork, inhibits UV degradation and oxidization. Preserved previously applied LSPs, last stage products such as waxes and sealants. Water-based and safe for all automotive paint finishes, does not result in chemical buildup or dusty chalky residue. Effectively removes abrasive residue from polishing and paint correction processes. Can be used with auto clay bar uh, to impart high shine and lubrication in one and as a drying aid to prevent water spotting in hard areas. So in the mega test, I then rated this highly and I think we gave it awards in the gloss boosting category because I remember using it and just being blown away with the level of finish. But what I said about it was that I thought it was potentially over concentrated because you could really see when you sprayed it onto the panel, you could really see that film as you were kind of working it around. And I initially didn't like that when I was working it, okay? But then when it had kind of, when you'd leveled it and you'd spread it all, and, and it's kind of, you know, it's vaporized away and left whatever products on your panel. I thought it was one of the best gloss boosting um, detail sprays out there. And I didn't know. Now, so it says read the technical data sheet. And this is the first time I'd read the technical data sheet. I didn't even know that it's got all this other chemistry in there to do other stuff. So it's got the charged, the charged polymer kind of additive, which is, I think that's similar thing to what some of those waterless or rinseless wash um, products use. So in other words, it suspends the dirt, so it provides that that um, that kind of, is it called ionic cushioning, so that when you're spraying it on dust and using it as a kind of, not a full-blooded waterless wash, but you're just maintaining the finish. You might be going to a show, you've got a bit of dust on your car and you spray it on there. 
you know, which you, no one likes cl cleaning dirt off your car that way. But if you're gonna, for whatever reason you need to, then the products with this, this dirt cushioning or this, this ionic cushioning are probably the ones that you wanna be using. So it has that in there as well. So not a lot of detail sprays do. So that's another ticked box that, you know, a lot of the products aren't able to tick. Um, the next thing, the next thing is you can use it as a clay bar lube, again for the same reason. It's got that good lubricant quality, but it's got the, the kind of cushioning. So if you're pulling the contaminants off, it's gonna to help to have that cushioning, I assume. The third thing about this is you can water it down up to 50-50. So you've got 500 milliliters of product. You can add 500 milliliters of water and get yourself one liter of product as opposed to 500 milliliters. I actually think that's a really good idea and I do add a little bit of water to this, especially for when I'm using it as a detailing spray or, or the word finishing dressing. I like that word where you're trying to, you've got a clean car and you're just, it's, all, it's been protected fairly recently and you've washed it and you just want to top up some gloss. So finishing dressing is a good word. When I use this product now as a finishing dressing, I use three parts product to one part water. So um, not 50-50, I use it 75-25 um, if you like. And I find that just solves that issue that the product is so potent if you use it neat. And you also get more product for your money. So in summary, um, the Auto QD is a lot more versatile and does a lot more things than I even ever knew about until I saw this technical data sheet on the product. So it's actually quite a versatile product, but for me, the standout characteristic of this is the level of gloss that it will apply to your clear coat. And that is the reason why I recommended it in the PVD Mega Test um, in PVD Volume 3. Okay, last but not least is Built Hamber Cleanser Fluid. Cleanser Fluid is a pure chemical cleaner that removes hydrocarbon and road films and oil-based matter that reduce the clarity of automotive finishes and reduce the longevity of last stage products such as waxes and sealants. Cleanser Fluid's unique action primes the paint surface to increase wax and sealant adhesion. Cleanser Fluid will also release and clean polish residue in a safer and more effective manner than um, IPA, isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so this product is what's called a pre-wax cleanser. So, so it's a product that you apply to your paintwork to provide a clean surface before you provide, before you apply a wax or a sealant. Now, a couple of things about this product. Um, it's 14.95 for 500 milliliters, okay? And I couldn't see, I need to double check this, but I couldn't see an option to buy five liters or. 75 liters of it or whatever. I couldn't see a bulk buy option, so I'm not sure about that. Um, so 14.95 for 500 milliliters. It's reasonably, it's reasonably expensive, I'd fair, fair to say, which is unusual because Built Hamber seem to be um, generally way below the market average price for their products, whereas this I think is probably on the market or slightly over the market average price. Now, the first thing about this is I've used this product before as well. We were using it on them. Um, we were using it for the mega test to clean clean the waxes on the panels. And we were also, I've used it before a few years ago. I've had a bottle of this. And I know it's a very effective kind of paint cleanser, okay? A couple of things about it. One, I believe it is non-abrasive, okay? So there are sealants out there that form these chemical bonds to the paintwork. And it's my understanding that some of those sealants, the bonds, um, cannot be fully broken by, by um, pre-wax cleaners. So there's some products out there that you need abrasive pre-wax cleaners to remove. So this is non-abrasive. So I don't know if it will effectively remove every form of bonded sealant from paintwork. It will certainly weaken them. Don't get me wrong, it will weaken them, but you can't fully remove them all. So I tend to, in my arsenal, have two type of pre-wax pre cleansers, either an abrasive one for removing products completely that are bonded, and a non-abrasive one that I'll use for stripping off wax-based coatings that are sitting there with surface tension, kind of, you know, that have, the solvents have vaporized and left a product which is sitting on top of your clear coat by a surface tension. So I would guess that this is more suitable for removing waxes than bonded sealants. 
So whenever you're using pre-wax cleansers, be careful about using them out in real high temperatures when there's lots of sun and there's temperature stored in your panel. Be careful to not leave them on your, your panels for too long and buff them off. This is a relatively easy product to use. It is potent, okay? It will, it, you know, if you want to test how potent it is, have your car waxed and use it on one side of the car where the wax is and then look at the sort of hydrophobicity, it will be gone, okay? This is potent enough to kind of strip those waxes off your car. But the fact it's non-abrasive might mean for certain bonded sealants, you will need to remove them with kind of mechanical abrasion um, and or a pre-wax cleanser that does contain an abrasive. So built hamber cleanser fluid is definitely a very effective pre-wax cleanser. The only thing I'd like to see improved is perhaps bulk buy options. And then with those bulk, bulk buy options, a kind of reduction in price per litre as you buy more. Because um, I, I go through these products a lot and I would go through 500 millilitres pretty rapidly. Okay guys, so I want to just draw my conclusions and thoughts on the built hamber kind of automotive products range that we've been talking about here. Um, first of all, there's some things that I'd like to see from them. Um, I would love to see from them because I've got a lot of com confidence in the strength of the, their products, the formulation quality of their products. Okay, a hell of a lot of confidence. We'll talk about that in a second. I would love to see on, from them a full on range of abrasives, you know, a compound. Um, an, uh, I know they've got an all in one type cleaner polish, but I'd like to see a compound, a finishing polish, and maybe. Um, you know, a single stage polish, that, a diminishing polish, a bit like our Shoal S20 Black. I'd love to see them do that because I know with their kind of chemical expertise, they could come up with something pretty special. They don't seem to have any glass, dedicated glass cleaner products. I'm sure you could probably use the paint cleanser to kind of clean your glass, but just usually, typically, you'll see a glass cleaner in there as well. Um, perhaps in future, they might... Um, you know, I'd like to see a sealant, a dedicated sealant, you know, rather than a wax, um, perhaps wet coats, maybe even, you know, them offering a ceramic coating because they've got really good formulation expertise. One other product that I'd like to see added to the range would perhaps be a tyre dressing or a vinyl and rubber dressing, an all-round vinyl and rubber dressing, because I think that's an important product as part of the kind of maintenance and kind of detailing of your car that was missing. Okay, my final conclusions on the built hamber range. I was getting very conscious of the fact when I was going through these products that I was almost getting to the point where saying, this is the best product I've used in this class. This is the best product I've used in that class. This is, and I was working my way through and I'm thinking, I'm gonna end up saying that these are the best products in every single class. Let's do a quick summary of the ones I think that are the best in class straight away. And I have no hesitation of saying it to you. So they're two bleeding fallout removers, Auto Wheel and Corosol best in class for me for, for removing that fallout from, from your paintwork or for cleaning your wheels with the fallout remover to get that bonded fallout off of the, the, the um, wheel surface. Auto wash shampoo, okay, for me is pretty much the best shampoo I've ever used, okay. I can see certain things about the purity of the product and they're talking about it and I can, whenever they talk about something, if I can see it, I'm really happy because it tells me that they're, you know, that their chemistry is, is legit and it's not just kind of product sort of promotion. This auto wash product is really is high foaming, which is important to me. And that foaming gives you the nice slip and lubrication. But more importantly is the way the product just rinses off the, the car, giving you a really clean finish, but no residues at all. This is the best shampoo in terms of um, leaving you a clean residue finish. It's really a lovely shampoo to work with, okay? Auto Wash, their Snow Foam, and Surfix HD, their APC. Auto Wash is one of the most effective snow foams actually cleaning that film off of your car. And it does it in a no-nonsense way. Built Hamber could have easily made this product thicken up and create a big drift of kind of snow on the side of your car, which people really like. You know, your car looks like it's coated in white snow. They don't do that because they formulated it to clean effectively, okay, and not dwell and, and have these wetting agents and surficants that work better when it's wet. And I can see it in action as well. So whenever I see the product in action delivering me results, I love, I love to see that. So. I think Auto Wash is perhaps one of the best snow farms I've used, or up there as one of the best. Um, 
Surfix HD, again, the most obvious thing about it is the versatility, the way you can bulk it down, the effectiveness of the product, um, the way the product comes off when, you've, um, you know, when you're removing, which is important, as well as its cleaning power. But the biggest bonus about Surfex HD for me is that price at $16.95 for five liters of it. I love that price because that will just last you for so long with the concentration levels. So that is a really, really highly recommended APC and degreaser for me. Okay, another best in class guys, and I, and I said it all when I talked about these individual products, their clay bar range is best in class by a long way. And again, if anyone's got a difference of opinion there and there's other products they prefer, let us know in the comments and channels because that's really important, okay? But in my opinion, I've not used a clay bar range that gives me the versatility that this range gives me for the price. And the most important thing is it goes up to, with their regular clay, a really good level of aggression, which I know is a bad word to use, but sometimes I need that aggression when I've got a lot of contaminants on my car. So when I need it, it's there and I can go for the regular. When I don't need it, I can drop down to the softer clay when there's less to remove, or I don't want that level of aggression. So their clay bar, their clay bar range is definitely the best in class. All in all, this brand range impresses me so much that if I was pushed, someone had my arm behind my back, twisting my arm, to give you the name of one brand that if I just had to stick to for kind of doing all of my kind of maintenance kind of activities on my car, all my decontamination, and then having to just use one product to kind of seal and wax them. If I had to pick a brand to do that, I think I I think Built Handle would probably be top of the list for me. And it's a it, again, it's quite a small range, but just. The fact that I've gone through these products and I'm saying this is best in class, this is best in class, this is best in class, and this is good value for money, this is ridiculous value for money, this is ridiculous value for money. Um, it just summarizes everything that I want to get across about Built Hamber. Performance that you can measure and observe for yourself and compare against other products at fantastic prices. Okay guys, I wanna wrap this up now finally by saying thank you to uh, Peter Hamber from Built Hamber for, for again allowing me to do this review and just making it very simple. You know, I approached um, Built Hamber and just told them what I wanted to do and there, was, there wasn't, you know, there was no politics or anything. It was just like, yeah, okay, let's go for it. They sent the products across again with no directions or, you know, no kind of um, pr provided script about anything. I had to say no guidelines of this, just, you know, have a play around with them, say what you want. And uh, I've been allowed to kind of use them and give you my real honest kind of feedback on this range. And it is very, very impressive. And if you haven't used any of this stuff, you need to go and check out the products that I've recommended. So I'll put a link in the description to some places where you can buy these products and they come highly recommended by the Forensics Detailing Channel. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching. Really enjoyed doing this video, some great products. As always, there will be lots more to come on the channel, more best of videos, more product reviews, more demos, and a ton more stuff next year. It's been a, our first year in kind of um, doing these videos now. It's been, it's been a real fun, and I'm starting to get the hang of the editing. I'm starting to slowly get the hang of how this camera works and slowly improving. So hopefully next year, 2017, is gonna be an even better year for us, and, and who knows what's gonna come up on the channel next year. So to everyone who's subscribed and supported the channel, it means everything to me. So thank you very much, and have a great Christmas and New Year, and I'll see you all again soon. Down, Leo comes down in the ground.